let's uh, come on to the, the U7. Now, this is an organization, Mark, that almost me. I certainly hadn't heard of it until yesterday, but uh, let, let's hear about this. Yeah, this, when I was preparing the AV thing and I had the slides just about done, I found this late in the game. <clears throat> and the, the gentleman producing the show that helped produce the show um, plugged, plugged one slide in for me. And I was quite surprised myself. Uh, the U7 is is the Urban 7, and they're in conjunction literally uh, with the G7, the group of nations. And they're basically one and the same now. They're, they're breaking bread together, and they're uh, massaging policy together across a broad spectrum of issues, thereby elevating cities from their normal municipal functions and formally and officially making cities part of the internationalist network. <clears throat> and here we're seeing a slide. Uh, the U7, the Urban 7, uh, there's the U7 group, as I inscribed with my stylus there in red, city networks in their role as speakers for cities and municipalities constitute the central actors of the U7 or Urban 7 process. The U, the U7 group, together with national associations of cities and network partners, that involves a lot of private actors, ensures that all G7 countries and the local governments are therefore represented in the U7 process, the U7 Secretariat. The U7 group is chaired by the U7 Secretariat consisting of the Local Governments for Sustainability Organization and the Global Parliament of Mayors, there they are, as well as the City Association from the country leading the G7 that year. In 2023, it was Japan, a Japanese association. <clears throat> Moving on from there, uh, since its launch in 2021, get this, by Core Cities UK, the G7 Urban 7 or U7 advocates for a continuous dialogue between the G7 nations and municipal actors represented by these national associations and supported by international city networks. So Core Cities UK actually sired this. They actually gave birth to this uh, U7 group. Uh, moving on from there, we see another interesting statement. We And this is all from the U7's official website. I'm not pulling this out of any hat here. We acknowledge the significant role of cities, their associations, and networks as actors in our transformation towards sustainable development. Uh, we commit to foster exchange among and with cities. And I emphasize the words there in our transformation toward sustainable development. As I mentioned at AV, the Global Cities Movement with Smart Cities Technology uh, outfitted, all of it, all roads lead to the sustainable development goals of the UN. So all the cities, the global cities with the Smart Cities Technology, they all have to think alike. They all have to adopt the same ideology. They all have to have the achievement of the sustainable development goals as their ultimate objectives. And therefore, U7 plugs into G7 and everything is formalized. Uh, going on from there, uh, we have uh, the national associations of cities that are, in, that are involved in the Urban 7. We have Canada, the Federation of Canadian Mis Municipalities, France, uh, which is France Urbane or Urban France, Germany, uh, the Association of German Cities, excuse me, Italy, the National Association of Italian Municipalities, uh, Japan, as noted, they're sort of the designated group right now, and that's through the uh, Japan-designated City Mayors Association, the European Union, EuroCities, the creator of uh, U7, uh, Core Cities UK, and USA, the United States Conference of Mayors. A quick footnote on the United States Conference of Mayors, they used to simply lobby uh, national and state officials for the legislation they want. Evidently, they're getting impatient, and now they're getting more directly involved. And here we have something about the Global Parliament of Mayors up, and the Global Parliament of Mayors is, is one of the key cornerstones of this whole U7 operation. Uh, the Global Parliament of Mayors is a governance body, so these mayors come together Without any, without any authority that I'm aware of from their city charters or their national constitutions, they come together 
And by virtue of that alone, they believe they have the uh, lawful authority to govern. So they call themselves a governance body of, by, and for mayors from all continents with a vision of the world in which mayors, their cities, and networks and are equal partners in building global governance, equal partners. So they're, they're now equal partners with nation states to build global governance for an inclusive, of course, and sustainable world. Its mission is to facilitate debates between mayors, national governments, and international organizations, which is a bunch of private unelected uh, orgs, drive systematic change to take on global and national challenges and opportunities to achieve political change on a global scale. So you can see what's happening. Everything's getting hardwired now. And uh, this is the other um, chief uh, private organization like, we'll go, like the Global Parliament of Mayors that's involved in this. And this is the Local Governments for Sustainability I mentioned a few minutes ago. Local Governments for Sustainability is a global network of more than 2,500 local and regional governments committed to sustainable urban development. ECLI, I'm going to roughly pronounce the uh, acronym, its members and team of experts work together in over 125 countries through peer exchange partnerships and capacity building to create systemic change for urban sustainability, more globalese buzzwords, and to respond to complex global challenges. Local governments for sustainability brings the latest global knowledge and solutions to the local context. So they're um, uh, localizing globalism or globalism, as they sometimes euphemistically call it. And I believe this is the last posting to describe and or to, to give an overview of this. Uh, here we have the U7 groups, uh, one of their main statements from their website, the U7 group invites the G7 countries and G7 engagement groups to recognize the U7 as the new G7 engagement group and thereby acknowledge the importance of these objectives uh, this includes the engagement in G7 ministerial meetings focusing on the topic of city diplomacy. Here, here's that theme again that cities believe they have the prerogative and authority to actually conduct diplomacy, usually reserved to nation states, and multi-level cooperation and overall cooperation by it effectively engaging in local and regional governments in G7 meetings. The ultimate aim of the U7 engagement group will be to represent the interests of cities, municipalities, and regional governments. Its core will consist of national associations of cities supported by international city networks, as we've learned. Thus, the U7 engagement group will form a bridge between local and national governments. That is really describing what this is about. The U7 engagement group will form a bridge between local and national governments, offering local actors Kind of a strange choice of words there as oper as an, offering these local actors excuse me an opportunity to join forces and better position themselves in international political processes um etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, as the first step towards establishing the official u7 engagement group the urban seven group alliance hosted the u7 mayor's summit with the theme embracing the urban world cities as drivers for peace, democracy, and sustainability. And uh, come to think of it, I think I wrote a final statement on this. Uh, yeah, th this is some of my writing um, in a preliminary article that I'll soon be submitting. Um, it, it talks a little bit about who's been involved. I'll just pull out a couple names. Peter Kurz, the mayor of Mannheim, Germany, chairman of the Global Parliament of, May of Mayors, and another very significant one, his name comes up again and again and again in Global Cities parlance, and that's Marvin Rees right over there in Bristol, UK, chairman of the UK Core Cities, which actually created the Urban Seven. So Marvin Rees is up to his neck in this thing. And you've got Alberta, Canada involved, Des Moines, Iowa, of all places, at, uh, and Fort Collins, Colorado, et cetera. So um, there's a declaration uh, that was made. Um, I'll read part of it. I have another monitor here. Uh, part of this declaration from the mayor's summit that happened uh, recently this spring. Therefore, we mayors and leaders of the Urban Seven Group gathered through uh, the networks of local governments of G7 nations and European multilateral, multi-level governance under Germany's G7 presidency in 2022. Um, uh, they applaud 
the G7's unprecedented recognition of urban seven uh, cities and sustainable development or sustainable urban development and multi-level governance. So I might have misread that a little bit, but I uh, I don't know if you guys have any comments or observations. I had one more uh, on that slide. I had one more thing to read on yeah, the prior well, one. Yes. Well. Well. Look, Mark. The, the key point here is isn't it that that uh, we notionally live in so-called de democratic societies. We elect representatives to represent us at a national level and represent us uh, with other international bodies and organizations and countries uh, through diplomacy. Uh, and what's effectively happening here is that people that are either unelected or they're, they're sort of pseudo-elected, but they're elected on the basis of providing services at a local level, collecting the bins and keeping the street lights on. Uh, these people are now deciding that they want to be involved in the international conversations. And why? Because uh, for whatever ideological reasons, they are wanting to get involved in the climate change agenda, in the uh, the, the gender and, and sexuality uh, discussions and so on at an international level and do diplomacy at an international level, subverting in some ways. And David, I'd be interested to, to hear whether you think that the word subverting is inappropriate here, subverting uh, the national conversation and national discussion, because of course we're not having conversations, or people aren't having conversations with their local mayors about international uh, uh, policies. No, subverting is one way of putting it. Um, another way is the is whole common purpose uh, mantra of uh, operate beyond your authority. I mean, that, that, this is an example par excellence of that. Um, the the fact that it was founded by a British group, I think, is very interesting. Also, the, 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 the constituents of that, it's Belfast, Birmingham, Bristol, Cardiff, Glasgow, Leeds, Liverpool, Manchester, Newcastle, Nottingham and Sheffield. Not Edinburgh, not London, um, which is interesting. Uh, Glasgow, remember, uh, is having problems with uh, rat infestations and collecting the bins, so much so that... Uh, uh, the Glaswegian bin men have got a giant inflatable rat called Kludgy, the rat, that they use for campaigning about the, uh, the dangers that their members are experiencing collecting the bins in Glasgow. And this is obviously due to the fact that bin collection isn't working as well as it used to, because it used to be about keeping the city clean and tidy, and it's not anymore. Now it's about, about sustainable development goals. And, uh, and, and, and recycling. It's not about the thing that used to be about, so therefore it's not working. So they're not able to do that, but they're quite happy to declare themselves as, what was it now? The, oh yes, the U7 group highlights the role of cities as custodians of peace and democracy. So we can't, we can't actually collect the bins, but we are custodians of peace and democracy. Oh, okay. Yes, indeed, uh, yes. Acting beyond authority. So, uh, Mark, uh, you wanted to highlight this uh, article uh, from the UK column. Yeah, uh, this is another thing I didn't get in the AB yesterday, um, but this is an article I've had posted a while. It goes back to the Global Cities uh, uh, meetings of a year or two ago, a couple of years ago. COVID injections tip of the spear for Global Cities militant pursuit of equity. And uh, this, the Global Cities, of course, and here's Jillian Tett showed on this slide of the Financial Times, this collaborator with the Global Cities Movement, we're living in a post-national world and everything we've talked about here today and yesterday is certainly bearing that out. And uh, with COVID, they, you know, they felt it was an extreme injustice if some country or some minority within a country didn't get all the jabs that they deserve, completely ignoring adverse effects uh, of these jabs. So. Yeah, this this is really driving home what we've been covering for several years here on Global Cities. Yeah. And it's I, I wasn't totally aware that they're actually abandoning their general responsibilities as municipal officials, that the bins are not being cleaned, that there's maybe larger rat infestations and so on and so forth. So, yes, they're they're even jettisoning, uh, abandoning, that is, their 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 actual sworn duties and pursuing uh, authority that they really don't have. And that's actually the definition of tyranny. The exercise of power without authority is a pretty tidy definition of tyranny. 
Yes. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you, Mark. Okay. If you like what the UK Column does, you'd like to support us, uh, please head over to community.ukcolumn.org. There are options to help us out there. You can pick something up at the UK Column shop, which is shop.ukcolumn.org. Uh, but please do uh, share anything that you find on the various platforms, including the main website, which is uh, just ukcolumn.org or ukcolumnextracts.co.uk.